Imagine if Joe was 30 years younger with all of his current martial arts skills, and instead of becoming a comedian and podcaster, he pursued being a fighter in the UFC. But how far will Joe be able to go? What weight class will Joe be in? Considering Joe's 5'7", built like a speed bump, has a 72-inch wingspan, and weighs in around... What is it? 205. He will qualify in the light heavyweight category. But with Joe only being 5'7", fighting against the Giants in the light heavyweight division is an impossible task. Can you imagine Prime Joe against 6'4 Alex Patan Pereira? It'll probably look something like Eddie Hall's recent fight. That's the most exciting it's been. Oh, I went for a tackle, swingy backhand, punch, punch, power bomb, destination, fuck! The next weight class down is middleweight at 180 pounds. Joe will have to lose 20 pounds from his current weight, but that is very doable, especially considering Joe is in his 20s. But even at middleweight, Joe will be facing killers such as Adesanya, Strickland, and Chimeyev, all of whom are over six feet tall and have a massive reach advantage over Joe. So it makes sense for Joe to fight at welterweight. He'll definitely be on the shorter side of the division, but dropping to welterweight at 170 pounds is his best choice because he was never making 155 pounds at lightweight. What will Joe's fighting style be? Of course, Joe's background in Taekwondo and kickboxing means his kicking ability will be his most powerful weapon. We've all likely seen his legendary turning sidekick, which he taught GSP. Right? Well, but I was... man, I never seen anybody hit as hard. Like I don't care if it's a punch. Like, I never see a strike, a strike, a blow from a human being that hard. Man, I remember the, the bag when you were working in. It was a freaking hole almost in the bag. It was like a, a, a curves in the bag, like with your your footprint in it. I'm like, it's completely insane, man. It's a lot of power. Oh. Oh, straight. <laughs> that was a straight line. Man, I do, do you mind if I check, man, and I fucking, I, if I sure. get you and I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm gonna learn. Like, it's the best way to see someone who does it the best, you know, and learn from it. To receive that kind of reaction from GSP, one of the MMA GOATs, really shows the level of his technique. And Joe's kick is actually more powerful than most pro fighters. You're the hardest kicker ever on that goddamn UFC <laughs> machine. Well, uh, there's a video of me doing 152. Like, right now, you only see the one with me kicking it with my jeans on, and that got to 135. Really stretchy jeans? Yeah, uh, barbell PDs, jeans. Basically. The power generated from his kicks was over a thousand newtons. That's enough force to send anyone to the shadow realm if he lands it clean. And his unorthodox taekwondo kicks, combined with his large kickboxing experience, will make him seriously dangerous for anyone on the feet in the current welterweight division. But that's not all. Joe is, of course, a 10th planet BJJ black belt. That's no joke. On the ground, he'll have submission skills just as good as any of the deadliest submission artists in the UFC. These two skill sets combined together certainly will make Prime Joe Rogan a handful for anyone in the welterweight division. However, there are two areas Joe will struggle in. The first, of course, is his reach. Standing at 5'7", he'll be one of the shortest fighters in the welterweight division and almost always be at a reach disadvantage. Also, he does not have any extensive wrestling and takedown background. With the rise of the wrestlers in the UFC, we know how important this attribute is. Of course, as a high-level BJJ black belt, Joe is definitely no scrub when it comes to takedowns. But he'll not be anywhere near the level of the high-level wrestlers in the welterweight division, such as Colby Covington or Bilal Muhammad. However, him being shorter may help his takedown defense as he has a lower center of gravity. We saw this in the first Volk versus Islam Makachev fight, with Volks being really hard to take down, for example. And Henry Cejudo spoke about this size difference. More explosive, you're, you're harder to take down because of the level change. How far I have to go to level change to get to his hit. You look at Volkanovski fighting Max Holloway. He was a shorter fighter, but he was actually winning the striking advantage because he understood the biggest thing, which was distance, right? And for me, in my career, when I fight guys who are the same height as me, I actually have a hard time because the distance and the range is a little bit different, right? And just like Hume says, when you find a taller guy, you have much more, I don't have to change as much elevation. I just go, boop, and I'm there. Another point to mention is, with Joe's comedic personality, He'll be great at talking trash on the mic and generating publicity for the fights. So with these attributes in mind, whose fighting style does Joe's compare to the most? Well, with his kickboxing background and black belt in both Taekwondo and BJJ, Anderson Silva does come to mind. However, Anderson Silva was usually a more rangy type fighter, whereas Joe has a short stocky build. Someone like Volk is also a similar comparison. Volk has a really good stand-up game, mainly from kickboxing, 
but Volk doesn't have the BJJ skill set that Joe possesses. Volk and Joe are also short bald guys, which has to come into consideration. Journey to Champ. In Joe's first 10 fights, he'll go undefeated, winning mostly by knockout or submission. He'll quickly take a name for himself due to his skills and also his ability on the mic. He'll be too much for most amateur fighters to handle and the UFC will soon come calling. Joe will begin in the Contender Series and make quick work of his opponents with a 100% finish rate. This will elevate his name and the hype train will be in full swing. With his UFC debut next, Dana will know he has a potential star in his hands. But will Prime Joe be able to break into the current top 15 of the UFC? In our poll, 32% of you said that he'll be a top 15 fighter, so let's analyze the current welterweight division from 15 to 11 first. The names highlighted are the three fighters who are 6 foot 2 or taller. With this crazy reach disadvantage, Joe being 5'7", he'll really struggle, as suggested by this comment on our poll. And it's true, he will struggle greatly, especially against the likes of Michael Venom Page. That guy is the epitome of a highlight reel. The London shoot fighter screaming at him, trying to take it seriously, oh! and there's a spinning kick. Oh! That is unbelievable. Wow. He turns, he kicks, he stands. That leaves two fighters, Vicente Luque and Joaquin Buckley. Now, Luque is 5'11 and Buckley is 5'8, so Joe will still have a reach disadvantage, but not as bad compared to other opponents. So how will Prime Joe do against either of these opponents? Luque, currently ranked 13, is an extremely well-rounded fighter. He is very proficient in striking, but also is a very dangerous grappler, as he has a BJJ black belt. At the time of this recording, he has 11 knockouts and 8 submission wins. His biggest weakness is his striking defense, as he often takes a lot of damage and can be caught easily as shown by his recent TKO loss to Buckley. However, Luque will just be too big, too powerful, and much better than Joe in every aspect. Ultimately, he'll be too much for him. On the other hand, Joaquin Buckley is a very different fighter. He's extremely dangerous and explosive on the feet. As of recording, he has 13 wins by knockout. They are so even on total strikes at the moment. Oh! Since Joe and Buckley both have taekwondo and kickboxing experience, it will be an exciting fight. But Buckley's biggest weakness is his grappling. He's only a BJJ blue belt, and has no submission wins in his career. If Joe was able to take Buckley to the ground, he'll have a high chance of being able to submit Buckley and get the win. This is the best route for prime Joe Rogan to get into the top 10, but how will he do against them? Let's look at ranks 10 to 4 in the welterweight division and work our way up. At number 10, we have Jeff Neal. He's another well-rounded, extremely tough fighter. Standing at 5'11", the reach disadvantage will be minimal for Joe, and on the feet, it'll be a great matchup, with Neil primarily being a striker. However, Neil has very good takedown defense, successfully preventing 88% of takedown attempts. But if Neil is taken down, Joe will have a big advantage in any submission attempt, as shown by his match against Shavak Rachmanov. With this in mind, Joe will be able to get the job done and win by submission. At number 9, we have Steven Wonderboy Thompson. Now this will be such a cool matchup on the feet, with Wonderboy's karate kickboxing style going against Joe's taekwondo kickboxing style. Of course, though, it's Wonderboy, and you have to expect him to have the advantage with the striking. However, this is MMA, and Wonderboy's glaring weakness is grapple, as shown by losses to Shavkat and Bilal Muhammad. With Wonderboy only having a 66% takedown defense success rate, Joe will be able to take him down and win by submission. Next. At number 8, we have Sean Brady. He's very well-rounded and particularly dangerous with his grappling, being able to consistently take down opponents. As of recording, Brady has 5 submission wins. Brady is only 5'9", and with Joe's unique and dynamic striking, he will give him problems. However, Brady is so well-rounded that he only has one loss, which was from Bilal, who won due to his elite wrestling and striking. Joe does not have this level of wrestling, and Brady is too well-rounded and will win the fight, most likely by decision. At rank 7, we have the undefeated Ian Gary. Standing at 6'3 with a massive reach advantage, he will piece Joe up at range 
with his creative striking and likely finish him, or win by decision. And honestly, after Ian Gary comes Gilbert Burns, another elite, well-rounded fighter. Then it's the top five, with Jack Della Madalena, Colby Covington, Shavkat Rachmanov, Bilal Muhammad, Kumaro Usman, and then of course the champ, Leon Edwards. Now, prime Joe Rogan, even at the height of his powers, isn't beating any of these guys, honestly. As much as we would love to make a potential case, these guys in the top five are just all complete monsters. And from the poll results in the comments, it seems most of you guys thought Joe would not even make it this far. So is it possible that prime Joe Rogan can be a top 15 fighter in the current welterweight division if he was given certain favorable matchups, or can he go even further? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And if you want to learn more about Joe Rogan, including scandals with UFC fighters Joe has interviewed, Click here to watch.